The English Electric Lightning is a supersonic jet fighter aircraft of the Cold War era. It was designed, developed, and manufactured by English Electric, who were subsequently absorbed by the newly formed British Aircraft Corporation by government dictate. It was then marketed as the BAC Lightning. The Lightning was the only all-British Mach 2 fighter aircraft and was the first aircraft capable of supercruise. The Lightning was prominently used by the Royal Air Force and the Royal Saudi Air Force. Although it was the RAF's primary interceptor for more than two decades it was never required to attack another aircraft. The Lightning is powered by two Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet engines and a unique staggered stacked installation in the fuselage. The Lightning was developed to intercept increasingly capable bomber aircraft, and thus has exceptional climb, altitude, and speed. Pilots have described flying it as being saddled to a skyrocket. This performance made the Lightning a fuel-critical aircraft meaning that its missions are dictated to a high degree by its limited range. Later developments provided greater range and speed along with reconnaissance and ground attack capability. Following retirement in the late 1980s, many of the remaining aircraft became museum exhibits and, until 2010, three Lightnings were kept flying at Thunder City in Cape Town, South Africa. In September 2008, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers conferred on the Lightning its Engineering Heritage Award at a ceremony at BAE Systems site at Walton Aerodrome. Development, Origins The specification for the aircraft followed the cancellation of the Air Ministry's 1942 E24-43 supersonic research aircraft specification which had resulted in the MILES M52 program. W.E.W. Teddy Petter, formerly chief designer at Westland Aircraft, was a keen early proponent of Britain's need to develop a supersonic fighter aircraft, and proved his point when trials between an RAF Gloucester Meteor F-4 and an English Electric Canberra demonstrated that Britain's current air defences would be entirely unable to intercept a bomber travelling at an altitude of 50,000 feet and at a speed of Mach 0.85. In 1947, Petter approached the Ministry of Supply with his proposal, in response specification year 103 was issued for a single research aircraft, which was to be capable of flight at Mach 1.5 and 50,000 feet. It was apparent that that aircraft's wings would need to be highly swept in order for an aircraft to attain such a high speed, English Electric decided to adopt an angle of 60 degrees. In order to test the design of both the wing and the tailplane and to assess handling, Short Brothers were issued a contract to produce the Short SB-5, a low-speed research aircraft. The SB-5 was developed so that different wing sweep angles could be assumed by the single aircraft, an assortment of tailplanes and wings were supplied and could be installed in order for their flight performance to be evaluated. The Royal Aircraft Establishment was notably skeptical of Petter's swept wing theories however, following the first flight of the SB-5 on December 2, 1952, the trials performed demonstrated the choice of a tailplane and a 60-degree wing seat proved the design principles to be effective. Aerodynamic data produced from the SB-5 flights and wind tunnel testing helped shape the emerging Year 103 design. In 1949, the Ministry of Supply had issued specification F-23-49, which expanded upon the scope of Year 103 to include fighter-level maneuvering. On April 1, 1950, English Electric received a contract for two flying airframes, as well as one static airframe, designated Pages 1 following the resignation or Petter, F.W. Page took over as design team leader for the Pages 1. From 1953 onwards, the first three prototype aircraft were hand-built at Salmsbury, these aircraft had been assigned the aircraft serials WG-760, WG-763 and WG-765. In May 1954, WG-760 and its support equipment were moved to RAF Boscombe Down for pre-flight ground taxi trials. On the morning of August 4, 1954, WG-760, piloted by Roland Beaumont, flew for the first time from Boscombe Down. One week later, WG-760 officially achieved supersonic flight for the first time having exceeded the speed of sound during its third flight. During its first flight, WG-760 had unknowingly exceeded Mach 1, due to position error the Mach meter only showed a maximum of Mach 0.95, 
the occurrence was noticed during flight data analysis a few days later. While WG-760 had proven the Pages 1 design to be viable, it was limited to Mach 1.51 due to directional stability limits. On June 9, 1952, it had been decided that there would be a second phase of prototypes built to develop the aircraft towards achieving Mach 2.0. These were designated Pages 1B while the initial three prototypes were retroactively reclassified as Pages 1A. The Pages 1B featured extensive alterations to the forward fuselage and refinement to the shock cone that regulated air flow into the engine inlet. In May 1956, the Pages 1 received the Lightning name, which was said to have been partially selected to reflect the aircraft's supersonic capabilities. On November 25, 1958, the Pages 1B became the first British aircraft to fly at Mach 2. The prototypes were powered by unreheated Armstrong Sidley Sapphire turbojets as the selected Rolls Royce Avon engines, which would power subsequent production aircraft, had fallen behind schedule due to their own development issues. Due to the limited internal space of the fuselage, the fuel capacity was relatively small, giving the prototypes an extremely limited endurance and the narrow tires housed in the thin wings would rapidly wear out. Outwardly, the prototypes looked very much like the production series, they were distinguished by the rounded triangular intakes, short fins and lacked operational equipment. Production, the first operational Lightning, designated the F-1, was designed as a point defense interceptor to defend mainland Britain from bomber attack. To best perform this intercept mission, emphasis was placed on rate of climb acceleration, and speed, rather than range and combat endurance. It was equipped with two 30mm maiden cannon in front of the cockpit windscreen and an interchangeable fuselage weapons pack containing either an additional two Aden cannon, 48 two-inch air-to-air rockets, or two de Havilland Fira Streak air-to-air missiles. A heavy loadout optimized for damaging large aircraft, weapon guidance and ranging, as well as search and track functions, mainly were provided via the Ferranti AI-23 board radar. The next two Lightning variants, the F-1A and F-2, were steady but relatively minor refinement of the design, while the next variant, the F-3, was a major departure. The F-3 had higher thrust Avon 301R engines, a larger squared off fin and strengthened intake bullet allowing a service clearance to Mach 2.0. The AI 23B radar and red top missile offered a forward hemisphere attack capability and deletion of the nose cannon. The new engines and fin made the F-3 the highest performance lightning yet, but with an even higher fuel consumption and resulting shorter range. The next variant, the F-6, was already in development, but there was a need for an interim solution to partially address the F-3 a Euro unregistered trademark S shortcomings, the F-3A. The F-3A introduced two improvements, a new, non-jettisonable, 610 imperial gallons ventral fuel tank, and a new, kinked, conically cambered wing leading edge, incorporating a slightly larger leading edge fuel tank, raising the total usable internal fuel to 716 imperial gallons. The conically cambered wing noticeably improved maneuverability, especially at higher altitudes, and the ventral tank nearly doubled available fuel. The increased fuel was very welcome, but the lack of cannon armament was felt to be a deficiency. It was thought that cannons were desirable to fire warning shots in the intercept mission. The F-6 was the ultimate lightning version to see British service. Originally, it was nearly identical to the F-3A with the exception that it could carry two 260 Imperial gallons ferro tanks on pylons over the wings. These tanks were jettisonable in an emergency, and gave the F-6 a substantially improved deployment capability. There remained one glaring shortcoming, the lack of cannon. This was finally rectified in the form of a modified ventral tank with two Aden cannons mounted in the front. The addition of the cannons and their ammunition decreased the tank's fuel capacity from 610 to 535 imperial gallons, but the cannon made the F-6A a Euro Oriel fighter a Euro again. The final British Lightning was the F-2A. This was an F-2 upgraded with the cambered wing, the squared fin, and the 610 gallons ventral. The F-2A retained the AI-23 and Fira Streak missile, 
the nose cannon, and the earlier Avon to 11 er engines. Although the F-2A lacked the thrust of the later Lightnings, it had the longest tactical range of all Lightning variants, and was used for low-altitude interception over Germany. Export and further developments, the F-53, otherwise known as the Export Lightning, developed as a private venture by BAC. While the Lightning had originated as an interception aircraft, this version was to have a multi-role capability for quickly interchanging between interception, reconnaissance, and ground attack duties. The F-53 was based on the F-6 airframe and avionics, including the large ventral fuel tank, cambered wing and overwind pylons for drop tanks of the F-6, but incorporated an additional pair of hardpoints under the outer wing. These hardpoints could be fitted with pylons for air-to-ground ordnance, including two 1000 LB bombs or four SNEB rocket pods each carrying 1868 on rockets. A gun pack carrying two Aden cannons and 120 rounds each could replace the forward part of the ventral fuel tank. Alternative, interchangeable packs in the forward fuselage carried two Fira Streak missiles, two Red Top missiles, twin retractable launchers for 44 a 2 inch rockets, or a reconnaissance pod fitted with 570 on Type 360 Vinton cameras. BAC also proposed clearing the overwing hardpoints for carriage of weapons as well as drop tanks, with additional Matra July 100 combined rocket and fuel pods rockets and 227 litres of fuel, or 1000 LB bombs being possible options. This could give a maximum ground attack weapons load for a developed export lightning of 6 1000 LB bombs or 44 uh, 2 inch rockets and 144 uh, 68 on rockets. The T-55 was the export two-seat variant. Unlike the RAF two-seaters, the T-55 was equipped for combat duties. The T-55 had a very similar fuselage to the T-5, while also using the wing and large ventral tank of the F-6. The export Lightning had all of the capability of the RAF's own Lightnings, exceptional climb rate, agile maneuvering, and a hard-hitting punch. Unfortunately, the export Lightning also retained the difficulty of maintenance, and serviceability rates suffered. The F-53 was generally well regarded by its pilots, and its adaptation to multiple roles showed the skill of its designers. In 1963, BAC Wharton was working on the preliminary design of a two-seat Lightning development with a variable geometry wing, based on the Lightning T-5. In addition to the variable geometry wing, which was to sweep back between 25 degrees and 60 degrees, the proposed design featured an extended ventral pack for greater fuel capacity, an enlarged dorsal fin fairing, an arrestor hook, and a revised inwardly retracting undercarriage. The aircraft was designed to be compatible with the Royal Navy's existing aircraft carrier's carrier-based aircraft, the VG Lightning concept was revised into a land-based interceptor intended for the RAF the following year. Various alternative engines to the Avon were suggested, such as the newer Rolls-Royce Spey engine. It is also likely that the VG Lightning would have adopted a solid nose to install a larger, more capable radar. Design Overview The Lightning had several unique and distinctive design features, principally of these being the twin-engine arrangement, a notched delta wing, and a low-mounted tailplane. The vertically stacked Longitudinally staggered engines was the solution devised by Petter to the conflicting requirements of minimizing frontal area, providing undisturbed engine airflow across a wide speed range, and packaging two engines to provide sufficient thrust to meet performance goals. The unusual over-under configuration allowed for the thrust of two engines, with the drag equivalent to only 1.5 engines mounted side by side a reduction in drag of 25% over more conventional twin-engine installations. The engines were fed by a single nose inlet, with the flow split vertically aft of the cockpit, and the nozzles tightly stacked, effectively tucking one engine behind the cockpit. The result was a low frontal area, an efficient inlet, and excellent single-engine handling with no problems of asymmetrical thrust. But, Due to the proximity of the engines a catastrophic failure of one engine is likely to also damage the other engine. If desired, an engine could be shut down in flight and the remaining engine ran in a more efficient power regime for increased range or endurance. 
although this was rarely done operationally due to the risk of loss of hydraulic power in the event of engine failure. Production aircraft were powered by various models of the Rolls-Royce Avon engine. This power plant was initially rated as capable of generating 11,250 pounds of dry thrust, when employing the four-stage afterburner this increased to a maximum thrust of 14,430 pounds. Later models of the Avon would feature, in addition to increased thrust, a full variable reheat arrangement. In flight, the engines would often reach 600 Celsius in temperature. A special heat reflecting paint containing gold was used to protect the aircraft's structure. Under optimum conditions, a well equipped maintenance facility would take four hours to perform an engine change. Specialized ground test rigs were developed in order to speed up maintenance and remove the need to perform a full ground run of the engine after some maintenance tasks. The stacked engine configuration complicated maintenance work and the leakage of fluid from the upper engine was a recurring fire hazard. The fire risk was reduced, but not eliminated, following remedial work during development. The fuselage was tightly packed, leaving no room for fuel tankage or main landing gear. While the notch delta wing lacked the volume of a standard delta wing, each wing contained a fairly conventional three-section main fuel tank and leading edge tank, holding 312 impergal. The wing flaps also each contained a 33 Olympogal fuel tank and an additional 5 Olympogal was contained in a fuel recuperator, bringing the aircraft's total internal fuel capacity to 700 Olympogal. The main landing gear was sandwiched outboard of the main tanks and after the leading edge tanks, with the flap fuel tanks behind. The long main gear legs retracted towards the wingtip necessitating an exceptionally thin main tire inflated to the high pressure of 330 Euro 350 SI. The Lightning featured a conformal ventral store to alternatively house a fuel tank or a rocket engine. The rocket engine, a Napier double scorpion motor, also contained a reserve of 200 Olympogal of high test peroxide to drive the rocket R Euro unregistered trademark S turbo pump and act as an oxidizer. Fuel would have been drawn from the aircraft internal tankage. The rocket engine was intended at an early stage in the Lightning Euro unregistered trademark S development to boost performance should non after burning engines be fitted, however, the subsequent basic performance with reheated Avons was deemed sufficient and the rocket engine option was cancelled in 1958. The ventral store was routinely used as an extra fuel tank, holding 247 Olympogal of usable fuel. On the later variants of the Lightning, a ventral weapons pack could be installed to alternatively equip the aircraft with different armaments, including missiles, rockets, and cannons. Avionics and Systems Early versions of the Lightning were equipped with a Ferranti-developed Monopulse AI-223 radar, which was contained right at the front of the fuselage within a conical bullet at the center of the engine intake. Radar information was displayed on an early heads-up display and managed by inboard computers. The AI-223, an immediate predecessor of the AI-24 Fox Hunter, supported several operational modes, which included autonomous search, automatic target tracking, and ranging for all weapons. The pilot attack site provided gyroscopically derived lead angle and backup stadiometric ranging for gun firing. The radar and gun site were collectively designated the Air Pass, Airborne Interception Radar and Pilot Attack Site System. The radar would be successively upgraded with the introduction of more capable lightning variants, such as to provide guidance for the Red Top missile. The cockpit of the lightning was designed to meet the RAF's OR946 specification for tactical air navigation technology, and thus featured an integrated flight instrument display arrangement an Elliott Brothers Limited autopilot, a master reference gyroscopic reader, an auto attack system, and an instrument landing system. Despite initial skepticism of the aircraft's centralized detection and warning system, the system proved its merits during the development program and was subsequently redeveloped for greater reliability. Communications included UHF and VHF radios and a data link. Unlike the previous generation of aircraft which used gaseous oxygen for life air support, the Lightning would employ liquid oxygen-based apparatus for the pilot. 
cockpit pressurization and conditioning would be maintained through tappings from the engine compressors. Electricity was provided via a bleed air-driven turbine housed in the rear fuselage, which in turn drove an AC alternator and DC generator. The approach was considered unusual at the time due to most aircraft using drive shaft driven generators alternators for electrical energy. A 28V DC battery provided emergency backup power. Aviation author Kev Darling stated at the Lightning, never before had a fighter been so dependent upon electronics. Each engine was equipped with a pair of hydraulic pumps, one would provide pressure for the flight control systems and the other for the undercarriage, flaps, and air brakes. Switchable hydraulic circuits were used for redundancy in the event of a leak or other failure. A combination of Dunlop Maxerat anti skid brakes on the main wheels and an Irvin air chute braking parachute slowed the aircraft during landing. An arrestor hook was also fitted. Accumulators on the wheel brakes performed as backups to the hydraulics, providing minimal braking. A stopped engine could also be windmilled to generate hydraulic power during flight. Towards the end of his service, the Lightning was increasingly outclassed by newer fighters, mainly due to the avionics and armaments being obsolete. The radar had a limited range and no track while scanning capability, also it could detect targets only in a fairly narrow arc. While an automatic collision course attack system was developed and successfully demonstrated by English Electric, it was not adopted due to cost concerns. While plans were mooted to supplement or replace the obsolete Red Top and Fira Streak missiles with modern AIM-9L Sidewinder missiles, which would have helped rectify some of obsolescence, these ambitions never came to fruition because of lack of funding. An alternative to the modernization of existing aircraft would have been the development of more advanced variants. A proposed variable geometry lightning would have likely involved the adoption of a new power plant and radar and was believed by BAC to significantly increase performance, but was ultimately not pursued. Climb The lightning possessed a remarkable climb rate. It was famous for its ability to rapidly rotate from takeoff to climb almost vertically from the runway, though this did not yield the best time to altitude. The Lightning's trademark tail stand maneuver exchanged air speed for altitude. It could slow to near stall speeds before commencing level flight. The Lightning Euro unregistered trademark S optimum climb profile required the use of afterburners during takeoff. Immediately after takeoff, the nose would be lowered for rapid acceleration to 430 kias before initiating a climb, stabilizing at 450 kias. This would yield a constant climb rate of approximately 20,000 a foot per minute. Around 13,000 EFT the Lightning would reach Mach 0.87 and maintain this speed until reaching the tropopause, 36,000 EFT on a standard day. If climbing further, Pilots would accelerate to supersonic speed at the tropper pause before resuming the climb. A lightning flying at optimum climb profile would reach 36,000 AFT in under three minutes. The official ceiling of the lightning was kept secret. Low security RAF documents would often state 60,000 plus FT. In September 1962, Fighter Command organized interception trials on Lockheed U-2 is at heights of around 60,000-65,000 AFT, which were temporarily based at RAF Upper Heffer to monitor Soviet nuclear tests. Climb techniques and flight profiles were developed to put the Lightning into a suitable attack position. To avoid risking the U-2, the Lightning was not permitted any closer than 5,000 feet and could not fly in front of the U-2. For the actual intercepts, for Lightning F-1 is conducted 18 solo sorties. The sorties proved that, under GCI, successful intercepts could be made at up to 65,000 feet. Due to sensitivity, details of these flights were deliberately avoided in the pilot logbooks. In 1984, during a NATO exercise, FLT Lieutenant Mike Hale intercepted a U-2 at a height which they had previously been considered safe. Records show that Hale also climbed to 88,000 AFT in his Lightning F3 XR 749. This was not sustained level flight but in a ballistic climb, in which the pilot takes the aircraft to top speed and then puts the aircraft into a climb, trading speed for altitude. 
Hale also participated in time to height and acceleration trials against Lockheed F 104 starfighters from Aalborg. He reports that the Lightnings won all races easily with the exception of the low level supersonic acceleration, which was a dead heat. Lightning pilot and chief examiner Brian Carroll reported taking a Lightning F-53 up to 87,300 feet over Saudi Arabia at which level Earth curvature was visible and the sky was quite dark, noting that control-wise, it was on a knife edge. Brian Carroll compared the Lightning and the F-15 Sea Eagle, having flown both aircraft, stating that, acceleration in both was impressive, you have all seen the Lightning leap away once brakes are released, the Eagle was almost as good, and climb speed was rapidly achieved. Takeoff roll is between 2,000 and 3,000 feet, 600 to 900 m, depending upon military or maximum afterburner power takeoff. The Lightning was quicker off the ground, reaching 50 feet, 15 m, height in a horizontal distance of 1,630 feet, 500 m. Chief test pilot for the Lightning Roland Beaumont, who also flew most of the Century Series U.S. aircraft, stated his opinion that nothing at that time had the inherent stability, control and docile handling characteristics of the Lightning throughout the full flight envelope. The turn performance and buffy boundaries of the Lightning were well in advance of anything known to him. Speed, early Lightning models, the F-1, F-1A, and F-2 had a rated top speed of Mach 1.7 at 36,000 feet in an ICAO standard atmosphere, and 650 knots indicated airspeed at lower altitudes. Later models, the F-2A, F-3, F-3A, F-6, and F-53, had a rated top speed of Mach 2.0 at 36,000 feet, and speeds up to 700 knots indicated airspeed for a Euro OE operational necessity only a Euro a Lightning fitted with Avon 200 series engines, a ventral tank and two Fira Streak missiles typically ran out of excess thrust at Mach 1.9 on a standard day. While a Lightning powered by the Avon 300 series engines, a ventral tank and two Red Top missiles ran out of excess thrust at Mach 2.0. Directional stability decreased as speed increased. There were potentially hazardous consequences in the form of vertical fin failure if yaw was not correctly counteracted by rudder use. Imposed Mach limits during missile launches protected stability. Later Lightning variants had a larger vertical fin, giving a greater stability margin at high speed. Supersonic speeds also threatened inlet stability. The inlet central shock cone served as a compression surface diverting air into the annular inlet. As the lightning accelerated through Mach 1, the shock cone generated an oblique shock positioned forward of the intake lip. Known as a subcritical inlet condition, this was stable but produced inefficient spillage drag. Around the design Mach speed, the oblique shock was positioned just in front of the inlet lip and efficiently compressed the air without spillage. When traveling beyond the design Mach, the oblique shock would become supercritical. Supersonic airflow entering the inlet duct, which could only handle subsonic air. In this condition, the engine generated drastically less thrust and may result in surges or compressor stalls, these could cause flameouts or damage. Thermal and structural limits were also present. Air is heated considerably when compressed by the passage of an aircraft at supersonic speeds. The airframe absorbs heat from the surrounding air the inlet shock cone at the front of the aircraft becoming the hottest part. The shock cone was composed of fiberglass, necessary because the shock cone also served as a radar dome. A metal shock cone would interfere with the AI-23 Euro unregistered trademark S radar emissions. The shock cone would be eventually weakened due to the fatigue caused by the thermal cycles involved in regularly performing high-speed flights. At 36,000 feet and Mach 1.7, the heating conditions on the shock cone would be similar to those at sea level and 650 knots indicated air speed, but if the speed was increased to Mach 2.0 at 36,000 feet, the shock cone would be exposed to higher temperatures than those at Mach 1.7. The shock cone was strengthened on the later Lightning F-2A, F-3, F-6, and F-53 models, thus allowing routine operations at up to Mach 2.0. The small fin variants could exceed Mach 1.7, 
but the stability limits and shock cone thermal strength limits made such speeds risky. The large fin variants, especially those equipped with Avon 300 series engines could safely reach Mach 2, and given the right atmospheric conditions, might even achieve a few more tenths of a Mach. All Lightning variants had the excess thrust to slightly exceed 700 knots indicated air speed under certain conditions, and the service limit of 650 knots was occasionally ignored. With the strength and shock cone, the Lightning could safely approach its thrust limit, but fuel consumption at very high air speeds was excessive and became a major limiting factor. Other flying, the Lightning was fully aerobatic and was capable of rates of roll far in excess of that which could be normally tolerated by a pilot. Operational History, Royal Air Force The first aircraft to enter service with the RAF, three pre-production pages 1 BS, arrived at RAF Coltishall in Norfolk on December 23, 1959, joining the Air Fighting Development Squadron of the Central Fighter Establishment, where they were used to clear the Lightning for entry into service. The production Lightning F-1 entered service with the AFDS in May 1960, allowing the unit to take part in the air defense exercise Yeoman later that month. The Lightning F-1 entered frontline squadron service with 74 Squadron at Coltishall from July 11, 1960. While performance achieved was excellent, both the aircraft's radar and missiles had proved to be effective and pilots were reporting that the Lightning was easy to fly. In the first few months of operation, the aircraft's serviceability was extremely poor. This was due to both the complexity of the Lightning systems and shortages of spares and ground support equipment. Even when the Lightning was not grounded by technical faults, the RAF initially struggled to get more than 20 flying hours per aircraft per month compared with the 40 flying hours that English Electric believed could be achieved with proper support. In spite of these issues, Within six months of the Lightning having entered service, 74 Squadron was able to achieve 100 flying hours per aircraft. In addition to its training and operational roles, 74 Squadron was appointed as the official Fighter Command Aerobatic Team for 1961, flying at airshows throughout the United Kingdom and Europe. Deliveries of the slightly improved Lightning F-1A, with improved avionics and provision for an air-to-air -air refueling probe allowed two more squadrons, 54 and 111 Squadron, both based at RAF Wartysham to convert to the Lightning in 1960 Euro 1961. The Lightning F-1 would only be ordered in limited numbers and serve for a short time, regardless it was viewed as a significant step forwards in Britain's air defence capabilities. Following their replacement from frontline duties by the introduction of successively improved variants of the Lightning. The remaining F-1 aircraft were employed by the Lightning Conversion Squadron. An improved variant, the F-2 first flew on July 11, 1961 and entered service with 19 Squadron at the end of 1962 and 92 Squadron in early 1963. Conversion of these two squadrons was aided by the use of the two-seat T-4 trainer, which entered service with the Lightning Conversion Squadron in June 1962. While the OCU was the major user of the two-seater, small numbers were also allocated to the frontline fighter squadrons. More F-2s were produced that there were available squadron slots, thus later production aircraft were typically stored for years before being used operationally. A number of Lightning F-2s would be undergo conversion to become F-2A aircraft, which featured some of the improvements made upon the more advanced F-6 model. The next generation Lightning F-3, with more powerful engines and the ability to use the new Red Top missile was expected to be the definitive Lightning, and at one time it was planned to equip 10 squadrons, with the remaining two squadrons retaining the F-2. On June 16, 1962, the F-3 was first flown. The F-3 variant would have a short operational life and be withdrawn from service early due to the combined factors of defense cutbacks and the introduction of the more capable Lightning F-6 model of which a small number of F-3s were converted into prior to delivery. The Lightning F-6 was a far more capable and longer-range version of the F-3. It initially lacked cannon in subsequent years installable gun packs were made available. While a handful of F-3s were upgraded to the F-6 standard, the majority Lightning F-3s were not rebuilt to the F-6 standards, 
Author Kev Darling suggests that decreasing British overseas defence commitments had led to those aircraft instead being prematurely withdrawn. The introduction of the F-6, along with the preceding F-3, allowed the RAF to progressively re-equip squadrons operating other interceptor aircraft such as the Gloucester Javelin and retire these types during the mid-1960s. The English Electric Lightning is credited with a single kill in 1972. A British Harrier pilot had ejected from his aircraft following apparently engine failure, however the pilotless aircraft unintentionally maintained flight and was heading towards the East German border, to avoid a diplomatic incident the Harrier was shot down. During British Airways trials in April 1985, Concorde was offered as a target to NATO fighters including F-15 Eagles, F-16 Fighting Falcons, F-14 Tomcats, Mirages, and F-104 Starfighters, but only Lightning XA-749, flown by Mike Hale and described by him as a very hot ship, even for a Lightning, managed to overtake Concorde on a stern conversion intercept. During the 1960s, as strategic awareness increased and a multitude of alternative fighter designs were developed by Warsaw Pact and NATO members, the Lightning's range and firepower shortcomings became increasingly apparent. The transfer of McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom IIs from Royal Navy's service enabled these much longer-ranged aircraft to be added to the RAF's interceptor force alongside those withdrawn from Germany as they were replaced by Sepak Hat Jaguars in the ground attack role. The Lightning's direct replacement was the Tornado F-3S, an interceptor variant of the Panavia Tornado. The Tornado featured several advantages over the Lightning including a far larger weapons load and considerably more advanced avionics. Lightnings were slowly phased out of service between 1974 and 1988. In their final years the airframes required considerable maintenance to keep them airworthy due to the sheer number of accumulated flight hours. Fighter Command Strike Command the main lightning role was the air defense of the United Kingdom and was operated at first as part of Fighter Command and then from 1968 with No. 11 Group of Strike Command. At the formation of Strike Command nine lightning squadrons were operational in the United Kingdom. Far East Air Force, in 1967 No. 74 Squadron was moved to RAF Tenga, Singapore to take over the air defense role from the Gloucester Javelin equipped 60 Squadron. The squadron was disbanded in 1971 following the withdrawal of British forces from Singapore. Near East Air Force, the Royal Air Force had detached lightnings to RAF Ikrotere, Cyprus to support the Near East Air Force and in 1967 No. 56 Squadron RAF moved from RAF Wachtysham with the Lightning F-3 to provide a permanent air defence force, it converted to the F-6 in 1971 and returned to the United Kingdom in 1975. Royal Air Force Germany, in the early 1960s No. 19 Squadron and No. 92 Squadron with Lightning F-2s, moved from RAF Le Confield to RAF Gar 1 quarter to slow in West Germany as part of Royal Air Force Germany and operated in the low-level air defense role until disbanded in 1977 when the role was taken over by the Phantom FGR-2. Middle East On December 21, 1965, Saudi Arabia keen to improve its air defenses owing to the Saudi involvement in the North Yemen civil war and the resultant air incursions into Saudi airspace by Egyptian forces supporting the Yemeni Republicans, placed a series of orders with Britain and the United States to build a new integrated air defense system. BAC received orders for 34 multi-role single-seat Lightning F-53s that could still retain very high performance and reasonable endurance, and six two-seat T-55 trainers together with 25 BAC Striker Master Trainers, while the contract also included new radar systems, American Hawk surface-to-air missiles and training and support services. In order to provide an urgent counter to the air incursions, with Saudi towns close to the border being bombed by Egyptian aircraft, an additional interim contract, called Magic Carpet, was placed in March 1966 for the supply of six XRAF Lightnings, six Hawker Hunters, two air defense radars and a number of Thunderbird surface-to-air missiles. The Magic Carpet Lightnings were delivered to Saudi Arabia in July 1966, with an additional F-52 being delivered in May 1967 to replace a Lightning lost in an accident. The Lightnings and Hunters, flown by contract pilots, 
were deployed to Karmis Mushet airfield near the Yemeni border, resulting in the curtailing of operations by the Egyptian Air Force over the Yemeni Saudi border. Although the first F 53s had been handed over to the RSAF in December 1967, they were kept at Wharton while trials and development continued, and the first Saudi Lightnings to leave Wharton were four T 55s delivered in early 1968 to the Royal Air Force 226 Operational Conversion Unit at RAF Coltishall. The four T 55s were used to train Saudi aircrew for the next 18 months. The new built Lightnings were delivered under Operation Magic Palm between July 1968 and August 1969. Two Lightnings, a F-53 and a T-55 were destroyed in accidents prior to delivery, and were replaced by two additional aircraft, the last of which was delivered in June 1972. The multi-role F-53 served in the ground attack and reconnaissance roles as well as an air defense fighter, with lightnings of No. 6 Squadron or SAF carrying out ground attack missions using rockets and bombs during a border dispute with South Yemen between December 1969 and May 1970. One F-53 was shot down by Yemeni ground fire on May 3, 1970 during a reconnaissance mission, with the pilot ejecting successfully and being rescued by Saudi forces. Saudi Arabia received Northrop F-5E fighters from 1971, which resulted in the Lightnings relinquishing the ground attack mission, concentrating on air defense, and to a lesser extent, reconnaissance. Up to 1982, the Lightnings were mainly operated by 2 and 6 Squadron or SAF, but when 6 Squadron re-equipped with the F-15 Eagle then all the remaining aircraft were operated by 2 Squadron at Tabike. In 1985 as part of the agreement to sell the Panavia Tornado to the RSAF, the 22 flyable Lightnings were traded into British Aerospace and returned to Wharton in January 1986. While Bannon offered the ex-Saudi Lightnings to Austria and Nigeria, no sales were made, and the aircraft were eventually disposed of to museums. Kuwait also ordered 14 Lightnings in December 1966, comprising 12 F-53KS and 2 T-55KS. The first Kuwait aircraft, a T-55K first flew on May 24, 1968 and deliveries to Kuwait started in December 1968. The Kuwaitis somewhat overestimated their ability to maintain such a complex aircraft, not adopting the extensive support from BAC and air work services that the Saudis used to keep their Lightnings operational, so serviceability was poor. The Kuwaiti Lightnings did not have a long service career. After unsuccessfully trying to sell them to Egypt in 1973, Kuwait replaced its last Lightnings with Dassault Mirage F1S in 1977. The remaining aircraft were stored at Kuwait International Airport, many were subsequently destroyed during the invasion of Kuwait by Iraq in August 1990. Variants English Electric Pages 1A, single-seat supersonic research aircraft, two prototypes built and one static test airframe. English Electric Pages 1B, single-seat operational prototypes to meet specification F-23-49, Three prototypes built, further 20 development aircraft ordered in February 1954. Type was officially named Lightning in October 1958. Lightning F-1, development batch aircraft, single-seat fighters delivered from 1959, a total of 19 built. Nose-mounted twin 30 or maiden cannon, two Fira Streak missiles, VHF radio and four anti-AI-23 airpass radar. Lightning F-1A, single-seat fighter, delivered in 1961. Featured Avon 210R engines, an in-flight refueling probe and UHF radio. A total of 28 built. Lightning F-2, single-seat fighter, delivered in 1962. A total of 44 built with 31 later modified to F-2A standard, 5 later modified to F-52 for export to Saudi Arabia. Lightning F-2A, single-seat fighter. Featuring Avon 11 or engines, retained Aden cannon and Fira streak, arrest a hook and enlarged ventral tank for two hours flight endurance. A total of 31 converted from F-2. Lightning F-3, single-seat fighter with upgraded AI-23B radar, Avon 301 or engines, new red top missiles, 
enlarged and clipped tailfin due to aerodynamics of carriage of red top, and deletion of Aden cannon. A total of 70 built. Lightning F3A, single seat fighter with extended range of 800 miles due to large ventral tank and new cambered wings. A total of 16 built, known also as an F3 interim version or F6 interim version, 15 later modified to F6 standard. Lightning T4, two seat side by side training version, based on the F1A. Two prototypes and 20 production built. Two aircraft later converted to T-5 prototypes, two aircraft later converted to T-54. Lightning T-5, two-seat side-by-side -side training version, based on the F-3. 22 production aircraft built. One former RAF aircraft later converted to T-55 for Saudi Arabia. Lightning F-6, single-seat fighter. It featured new wings with better efficiency and subsonic performance. Overwing fuel tanks and a larger ventral fuel tank, reintroduction of 30 ohm cannon, use of red top missiles. A total of 39 built. Lightning F 7, proposed single seat interceptor featuring variable geometry wings, extended fuselage, relocated undercarriage, underwing hardpoints, cheek mounted intakes, new radar, and use of the Sparrow Sky Flash AAMs. Never built. Lightning F 52, Slightly modified XRAF F2 single seat fighters for export to Saudi Arabia. Lightning F 53, export version of the F 6 with pylons for bombs or unguided rocket pods, 44A, 2 in, total of 46 built and 1 converted from F 6. Lightning T 54, XRAF T 4 two seat trainers supplied to Saudi Arabia. Lightning T 55, two seat side by side training aircraft. 8 built. Sea Lightning FAW-1, proposed two-seat Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm Carrier capable variant with variable geometry wing. Not built. Operators, military operators, a Q8, Q8 Air Force operated both the F-53K single-seat fighter and the T-55K training version from 1968 to 1977, a Saudi Arabia. Royal Saudi Air Force operated the Lightning from 1967 to 1986, two squadron operated the F-53 and T-55, six squadron operated the F-52 and F-53, thirteen squadron operated the F-52, F-53 and T-55 or SAF Lightning conversion unit. A United Kingdom, Royal Air Force operated the Lightning from 1959 to 1988. RAF aerial display teams, the Tigers of No. 74 Squadron. Led RAF aerial display team from 1962 and first display team with Mach 2 aircraft. The Firebirds of No. 56 Squadron from 1963 in red and silver. RAF squadrons, 5 Squadron formed at RAF Benbrook on October 8, 1965, operating the Lightning F 6 and T 5. A few F 1s. F-1s and F-3s were used as targets from 1971. The squadron remained operational at Benbrook with the Lightning F-6 until 1987, disbanding on December 31. Eleven squadron formed at RAF Lucas in April 1967 with the Lightning F-6. It moved to RAF Benbrook in March 1972, receiving a few F-3s for target duties. It remained in operational until 1988. Disbanding on April 30, 1988. 19 Squadron operated the F 2 and the F 2A, 23 Squadron operated the F 3 and the F 6, 29 Squadron operated the F 3, 56 Squadron operated the F 1, F 1A, F 3 and the F 6, 65 Squadron operated as number 226 OCU with the F 1, F 1A and the F 3, 74 Squadron operated the F 1. F-3 and the F-6, 92 Squadron operated the F-2 and the F-2A, 111 Squadron operated the F-1. A, F-3 and the F-6, 145 Squadron operated as number 226 OCU with the F-1, F-1A and the F-3, 226 Operational Conversion Unit operated the F-1A, F-3, T-4 and the T-5. Air Fighting Development Squadron, Lightning Conversion Squadron. RAF Flights, Finbrook Target Facilities Flight, 
Lucas Target Facilities Flight, Walt Tysham Target Facilities Flight, Lightning Training Flight. RAF Stations, RAF Ecrotary, RAF Benbrook, RAF Coltishall, RAF Galen Kirken, RAF Gar 1 Quarter to Slow, RAF Lecomfield, RAF Middleton Street George, RAF Lucas, RAF Tenger, RAF Walt Tysham. Civil Operators. A South Africa, Thunder City, a private company based at Cape Town International Airport, South Africa operated one Lightning T5 and two single-seat F6s. The T5 is currently airworthy as of January 2014 and remains the only flying Lightning the world. A Lightning T5, XS451 belonging to Thunder City crashed after developing mechanical problems during its display at the biennial South African Air Force Overberg Air Show held at AFB Overberg near Bredasdorp on November 14, 2009. The Silver Falcons, the South African Air Force's official aerobatic team, flew a missing man formation after it was announced that the pilot had died in the crash. A United States, the Anglo-American Lightning Organization, a group based at Stennis Airport, Kilm, Mississippi, is returning EE Lightning T5, XS422 to airworthy status. As of November 2013 the aircraft was capable of running its engines. The aircraft was formerly with the Empire Test Pilots School at Boscombe down in Wiltshire, UK. Survivors Cyprus, on display, XS929 Lightning F6 at RAF Ecrotary, Cyprus. France, on display, XM178 Lightning F1A at Savigny Labine. Kuwait, on display, 53 to 418 Lightning F53 at the Kuwait Science and Natural History Museum. Kuwait City. Lighting F-53 at the Abdullah Al Mubarak Air Base. Germany, on display, XN-730 Lightning F-2A at the Luftwaffe Museum, Gatto, Germany. XN-782 Lightning F-2A at the Flughaus de Hermskiel, Germany. Netherlands, on display, XN-784 Lightning F-2A at Barlow. Saudi Arabia, on display. XN-770 Lightning F-52 at the Royal Saudi Air Force Museum, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. XM-989 Lightning T-54 at the main entrance to King Abdulaziz Air Base, Dharan, Saudi Arabia. 55-716 Lightning T-55 at the Royal Saudi Air Force Museum, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The following are on display but with no public access. XG313 Lightning F1 at the VIP terminal on King Abdulaziz Air Base Dharan, Saudi Arabia. XN767 Lightning F52 Pylon mounted at the Aero Medical Center on King Abdulaziz Air Base Dharan, Saudi Arabia. South Africa, Airworthy, ZUBBD Lightning T5 based at Cape Town. Stored or under restoration, ZUBEW Lightning F6 stored in Cape Town. ZU Bay Lightning F6 stored in Cape Town. United Kingdom, on display, WG760, the first prototype pages 1A at the RAF Museum Cusford, England. WG763, the second prototype pages 1A at the Museum of Science and Industry, Manchester, England. XG329P1B Lightning F1 pre-production aircraft at the Norfolk and Suffolk Aviation Museum. Flixton, England. XG337P1B Lightning F1 pre-production aircraft at the RAF Museum Cusford. XM135 Lightning F1A at the Imperial War Museum Duford, England. XM192 Lightning F1A at Tattishall Thorpe, Lincolnshire, England. XN776 Lightning F2A at the National Museum of Flight, East Fortune, Scotland. XP706 Lightning F3 at Aero Venture, Doncaster, England. XL713 Lightning F3 at RAF Lucas, Scotland. XL728 Lightning F6 with LPG, Brunting Hall Paradrome, Leicestershire, England. XL749 Lightning F3 outside score groups integrated valve and gas turbine plant, Peterhead, Scotland. X-753 Lightning F3 at RAF Coningsby, Lincolnshire. X-770 Lightning F6 Gate Guardian at 5 Squadron, 
RAF Waddington, Waddington, England. XL771 Lightning F6 at the Midland Air Museum, Coventry, England. XS417 Lightning T5 at the Newark Air Museum, Newark, England. XS420 Lightning T5 on loan to the Farnborough Air Sciences Trust, Farnborough, England. XS456 Lightning T5 at the Skegness Water Leisure Park, Lincolnshire. XS459 Lightning T5 at the Finland and West Norfolk Aviation Museum, Usbech, England. XS897 Lightning F6 at RAF Coningsby, Lincolnshire. XS903 Lightning F6 at the Yorkshire Air Museum, Elvington, England. XS904 Lightning F6 with LPG, Brunting Hall Paradrome, Leicestershire, England. XS925 Lightning F6 stand mounted at Castle Motors on the A38 near Liscard, Cornwall, England. XS928 Lightning F6 at Walton Aerodrome, Lancashire. XS936 Lightning F6 at the RAF Museum, London, England. ZF578 Lightning F53 as XS753 at the Tangmere Military Aviation Museum, Tangmere, England. ZF579 Lightning F53 at the Gatwick Aviation Museum, Charlwood, near Gatwick Airport, England. ZF580 Lightning F53 outside BAE Systems, Salisbury, England. ZF581 Lightning F53 at the Bentwaters Cold War Museum, Suffolk, England. ZF583 Lightning F53 at the Solway Aviation Museum, Kalal Airport, Cumbria, England. ZF584 Lightning F53 at the Dumfries and Galloway Aviation Museum, Dumfries, Scotland. ZF588 Lightning F53 at the East Midlands Airport Aeropark, Castle Donington, England. ZF592 Lightning F53 as 53 to 686 at the City of Norwich Aviation Museum, Norwich, England. ZF594 Lightning F53 painted as XS733 at the Northeast Aircraft Museum, Sunderland, England. ZF598 Lightning T55 as 55 to 713 at the Midland Air Museum, Coventry, England. XL629 Lightning T4 inside the main gate at Mod Boscombe Down, Wiltshire, England. Stored or under restoration, XA847 Pages 1B stored dismantled in Suffolk, England, XM172 Lightning F1A in a private collection at Spark Bridge, Cumbria. XM173 Lightning F1A in a private collection at Preston, Lancashire. XP745 Lightning F3 stored in Greenford, London. XL724 Lightning F6 in a private collection at the former RAF Benbrook, Lincolnshire. XS416 Lightning T5 in a private collection at New York, Lincolnshire. XL725 Lightning F6 in a private collection at Benbrook, Lincolnshire. United States, stored or under restoration, N422 XS Lighting T5 painted as XS422 of the Royal Air Force, under restoration to fly at Stennis Airport, Mississippi. Specifications Data from pilot's notes and operating data manual for Lightning F6, general characteristics, crew, 1, length, 55 feet 3 inches, wingspan, 34 feet 10 in, height. 19 feet 7 in, wing area, 474.5 FTA squared, empty weight, 31,068 pounds, max takeoff weight, 45,750 pounds, power plant, 2A, Rolls-Royce Avon 301 or after burning turbojets, dry thrust, 12,530 pound forces each, thrust with afterburner, 16,000 pound forces each. Performance Maximum speed, Mach 2.0 at 36,000 feet 700 KIAS at lower altitude, range, 850 miles supersonic intercept radius, 155 miles, ferry range, 920 miles 1,270 miles with ferry tanks, service ceiling, 54,000 feet zoom ceiling greater than 70,000 feet, rate of climb, 20,000 feet per minute, wing loading, 76 pounds FTA squared, thrust weight, 
0.78, armament, guns, Tua, 30mm Aden cannon, hard points, Tua, under fuselage for mounting air-to-air -air missiles, 2x overwing. Pylon stations for 260 gallons ferry tanks A and provisions to carry combinations of missiles to de Havilland Fira Streak or to a Hawker Sidley Red Top. Notable appearances British journalist and TV presenter Jeremy Clarkson borrowed a lightning which was temporarily placed in his garden and documented on Clarkson's TV show Speed. Professor Brian Cox used a South African lightning in an episode of the BBC TV programme Wonders of the Solar System. The lightning climbed to a very high altitude, allowing the professor to show the curvature of the Earth and the relative dimensions of the atmosphere. Coincidentally, this aircraft subsequently crashed a month later at the Overberg Air Show after developing mechanical problems. See also List of accident and incidents involving the English electric lightning Related development, short SB-5, aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era, Dassault Mirage 3, Lockheed F-104 Starfighter, Mike Quayan Gurevic MiG-21, Sukhoi Su-15, related lists, list of aircraft of the RAF, list of fighter aircraft, references, notes, the ventral cannon installation was designed for the export aircraft but was later adopted by the RAF for the F-6 and F-2A. All fuel tank volumes are listed in imperial gallons, the lightning would increase forward velocity during the climb, the angle of the climb lessening from about 27 deg to 19 deg at 13,000 feet, the true airspeed associated with a given indicated airspeed increases with altitude. Below the tropopause, the true airspeed associated with a given Mach number decreases with altitude. The Lightning Euro Unregistered Trademark S Air Data System automatically corrected for errors in position and speed. Following correction, 450 KIAS was equal to Mach 0.87 at 13,000 feet, along with directional stability, rudder effectiveness decreased at higher Mach numbers. Timely and larger deflections of the rudder were required to counter any yaw, especially under increased G loading. Two Lightning prototypes, XL628 and XM966, were lost to vertical fin failure during roll testing at high Mach numbers. Fira streak firing limits were Mach 1.3 with the small fin, Mach 1.7 with the large fin. Red top limit was Mach 1.8. On a standard day, the temperature of the air at the tip of the shock cone was 156 AA degree Fahrenheit at Mach 1.7 and 36,000 feet. At sea level and 650 knots indicated air speed, this temperature was 151 AA degree Fahrenheit. At Mach 2.0, the stagnation temperature would be 242 AA degree Fahrenheit. Roland Biamont took the Lightning Pages 1 BXA847, a prototype of the F1, to Mach 2.0. Prior testing had determined that the aircraft would have the excess thrust to achieve this speed, given the right atmospheric conditions of a high tropopause and lower than standard temperature. The test flight was to check for inlet stability and monitor temperatures at higher Mach. The aircraft was equipped with a temperature probe to monitor the stagnation temperature, up to a never exceed temperature of 115 degrees Celsius. On November 28, 1958, the weather availed a high tropopause and a substandard minus 67 degrees Celsius at 40,000 feet. This was sufficient to allow Biamont to achieve Mach 2.0 in a British aircraft for the first time, reached only seven minutes after takeoff. The record dash left the Lightning critically short of fuel. The matchmaker fitted to service Lightning F1s and F1BS had a scale that stopped at Mach 1.8 a euro with a read line at 1.7. At 30,000 feet, a Lightning F6 would require approximately 1 minute and 1,250 pounds of fuel to accelerate from 650 to 675 knots indicated air speed. A single F1 was supplied as a ground instructional airframe. The value for empty weight is really the zero fuel weight, which includes equipped pilot, red top missiles, cannon and ammunition. The basic weight, without these items, is 27,759 pounds, the maximum permissible weight for takeoff and all forms of flying is 45,750 pounds. 
at weights above £45,000, the manheel tires have to be changed after one use. An F-6 equipped with red top missiles can reach Mach 2.0 on an ICAOSTD day at 36,000 feet. A clean F-6 can reach Mach 2.1 at 37,000 feet, this is based on a maximum range subsonic intercept radius of 370 nanometers. An F-6 equipped with red top missiles can climb to 36,000 feet and cruise at Mach 0.87 to a loiter or intercept area 370 nanometers distant. It then has 15 minutes on station to complete the intercept or identification task before returning to base. The afterburners are not used during this profile, and the total mission time is 112 minutes. An F-6 equipped with red top missiles can climb to 36,000 feet, accelerate to Mach 1.8, and intercept a target at 135 nanometers only 10.7 minutes after brake release. A 2G level turn allows a rear quarter re attack 1.6 minutes later. Following a best range cruise and descent, the lightning end is the landing pattern with 800 pounds of fuel remaining with a total mission time of 35 minutes. This is the initial climb rate associated with the Lightning Euro unregistered trademark S best time to climb profile of 450 KIA is to Mach 0.87. Using this profile, a Lightning F-6 with red top missiles can climb from sea level to 36,000 feet in 2.1 minutes following initial acceleration to 450 KIAS, or 2.8 minutes from brake release. A clean F-6 can perform the same climb in 2.0 minutes following initial acceleration, or 2.7 minutes from brake release. Wing loading is calculated from the above weight and wing area data. The listed value represents an F-6 with red top missiles and one half fuel. The wing loading can range between 86 to 67 pounds FTA squared over the duration of a mission, depending on fuel load. Citations Bibliography Further reading, Kegel, Peter. Lightning from the Cockpit, Flying the Supersonic Legend. Barnsley, South Yorkshire, UK, Pen and Sword Books Limited, 2004. ISBN 1-84415-082-8. External links, Anglo-American Lightning Organization, Returning to Flight XS-422, The Former ETPS Lightning at Stennis Airport, Kem, Mississippi, The Lightning Association, Thunder City, 5-Minute RAF Recruiting Film Streaked Lightning from 1962 at the National Archives Public.